Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to Knife AQ episode 112, the knife series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. And today we're talking about bushcraft knives as well as seeing what kind of combos could you put together under the $200 mark. Let's check them out. All right, if you're new to this series, the deal is we pull questions from our comments section to feature in these episodes. So if you have a question and you would like it to be considered for being featured in a future episode, comments section is where you wanna go. Leave it there and uh, it'll have its shot. First question today comes from Jake Smith. Is a Scandi grind just a short, lazy, flat grind? Here we go, shots fired right out of the gate. I love it. The short answer is no. It's not just a short, lazy, flat grind, even though it is a shorter grind and the bevels are nominally flat. We'll get to, get to that uh, or dive into that a little bit more here momentarily. But for those of you who may not be familiar with a Scandi grind, you can see it right here on this LT right. Holy Bushman V2. Essentially, it is two short, flat bevels, yes, and they come right down to no secondary bevel, as opposed to most things like this knife that has a flat grind or a hollow grind, and then you have a secondary sharpened edge at the end right there, at the uh, edge. A, a Scandi grind shouldn't have that, essentially. It comes right down to, quote unquote, zero, the two main bevels meet there at the edge. As such, there are some there are some advantages to that. They're especially good uh, at wood carving, which is why you see it used often on you know, bushcraft style of knives. And this type of grind was especially useful on uh, some of the softer woods that might have been encountered in the Scandinavian, Scandinavian and European regions where the Scandi grind takes its name from and where a lot of these bushcraft designs can trace their lineage back to. Now, because this edge comes right down to the edge or because these bevels come right down to the edge, I should say, to, to call it just like a lazy short flat grind, there's actually less room for error in a properly done Scandi edge than there is on something with a secondary bevel, where if you're off just a little bit on this Scandi, you're gonna get a wavy edge, recurves, inconsistencies. So to get a nice curved edge, a nice even edge, takes a little bit more precision. Not that there's you know a ton of wiggle room on something like this knife here with a secondary bevel, but there's a little bit more wiggle room, I would say, than a Scandi grind. Now, remember how I said that a, the, bleh, the bevels here were nominally flat? That's because there is, are some things to consider right at the edge. If a Scandi ground edge truly comes right down to that zero, typically we're talking about like a 12 degree angle, more or less, you know, give, give or take a degree or two on the edge, that's a narrower apex than something with a secondary bevel. As such, even though you've got more metal behind it, the edge itself can be a little less or a little more fragile. There's a way to combat that, however, and that is to kind of micro bevel or even just aggressively strop that edge. And you'll see that from some production companies in the way they produce their edges, such as this LT right, right here. After they grind in the primary bevel, they buff the edges much like, uh, to get a result much like you would if you spent some time with a strop. And it's not putting you know, a whole secondary bevel on it, but just right at that apex, it's kind of you know, thickening it up just a tiny bit. Not so much that it's gonna affect sharpening, which is easy to do on a Scandi because you can kind of feel the edge, just set it flat on your stone and go. But that just little hint of you know, beefing up goes a long way to keeping these knives from you know, chipping out and being too chippy in those scenarios, especially on harder woods. That's what you would see with uh, an LT Wright and several other companies achieve something the same way. Uh, but let me talk about a couple other, you know, famous Scandi makers and just kind of run through some of the peculiarities there. And the first we must talk about is Mora Knief. This one right here is the Mora, what's it? Uh, the Mora Spark <laughs> comes with a ferro rod here in the handle, which is pretty cool. And these are Scandi grinds as well, but to keep the price low, one of the ways they grind these is essentially with really 
huge grinding wheels. And as such, rather than this bevel being completely flat, it's actually got just a hint of hollow grindiness to it. And as you can see as well, just a hint of micro bevel on the edge again for the strength purposes. This is still a Scandi grind. I'm not gonna say it's a hollow grind <laughs> because when you lay this flat on the stone and sharpen through, that hollowness is gonna be essentially gone right away. It's, it's virtually imperceptible. Nice little peculiarity there. Uh, the other thing that uh, you'll see that's a little bit different, you see bandied about, Tops has their Scandi Vex edge is what they call it. Uh, you can see it here on this Tops Brachimo. Joe Flowers design, it wouldn't be a, a bushcraft episode without something from Joe Flowers after all. That's about 169 for this USA made knife. And the bevel here is a little bit steeper than something like that 12 degree might normally be because they come in at the edge and actually convex a little bit of the edge here. So your actual edge angle is gonna be closer to kind of that 12 degree mark, I believe. But you get, again, that kind of benefit of that little bit of extra, a little bit to keep it from being too chippy. Especially important on a tougher knife like this that does have a thicker blade. You know, just about five thirty seconds of an inch on this guy right here. So you don't want, uh, or, or you might feel compelled to be able to push this knife a little harder. You want to want a grind that's going to stand up to that. That does lead to kind of the disadvantage of Scandi grinds versus a flat or a hollow grind. While it's great at wood carving and all the uh, the stuff you might typically encounter or commonly encounter in a bushcraft scenario. It's not exactly gonna prep food as well or slice as well as a, another type of grind. So a little bit of a deep dive on Scandi grinds, why they're good, why they're different, and why they're not just short, lazy, flat grinds. There we go. All right, Chris Cairns now asks, I am trying to find a good bushcraft, bushcraft, <laughs> bushcraft group of tools for outdoors. Uh, I'm looking for a great bushcraft knife under the $200 mark a folding saw and a field strop for upkeep. Uh, any input would be great. Sure thing, I've got a few options here and actually let me put this down. So I'm, I'm gonna go at this two ways. You mentioned the $200 mark and it looks like you might be talking about just the knife for 200 uh, and I'll get to some of that, but I'm gonna try and get you a whole bushcraft tool setup all under the $200 mark. And there's actually a lot of great ways to do it nowadays. Um, First and foremost, let's talk about the knife to start with. You can certainly go with whatever Mora strikes your fancy, but I think you want something a little fancier. At least that seems to be what I'm reading into on the question. Something a little bit, uh, you might be able to take a little bit more pride in. And that's where this brand comes in. This is Joker Knives, they're made in Spain, and they're kind of a hidden gem in terms of value and sheer quality for the money you're paying. This right here is the Nordico. It's $92 knife. And man, if it doesn't feel quite honestly, almost twice as expensive. Superb craftsmanship right here. We've got a roughly four inch blade, Sandvix 14C28N stainless steel. Really good choice for a Scandi grind because a little extra toughness in that steel compared to some other options. Again, you don't want something that's gonna to be too chippy on a Scandi grind. Perfect size and shape for a bushcraft knife, that kind of four, four and a quarter, four and a half on the high end uh, size range seems to be something that's really gravitated to because this is not a one tool option survival knife. You're gonna be complementing it with other tools, which we'll get to those here in a second. Canvas micarta handles here, black liners, perfectly smooth, uh, transition between the scales and the full tang here. Excellent comfort in the hand and really high quality sheaths too. I believe this is its sheath. Uh, we have several jokers on the table today actually. Nice high quality leather with a dangler as well as a standard belt loop here. The dangler has some snaps on it so you could remove it a little more easily on and off your belt without removing said belt. All for 92 bucks which leaves us a lot of money left to play around with the other tools. You mentioned a saw and a strop, and I'm actually gonna add a third thing into the equation, and that is an ax. What I have right here for that is the Cold Steel Hudson Bay Tomahawk. F about 40 bucks for this right now. 
Are there better axes out there? Yes, absolutely. But at this price range, not really. These, this is one of the better options. This is a 22 inch long haft here. And what's nice about this is it's a little bit longer, but it's in that similar kind of small forest ax size range that a lot of bushcrafters really enjoy. And because it's a straight handle, you can shorten it up if you want to. Good size for just around the camp stuff. You can do a little bit heavier splitting, but it's not so unwieldy that it's gonna be super hard to kind of pack out to where you're going. This is a, uh, a set screw design as well as the uh, standard friction fit here. You could definitely kind of slice into this and uh, wedge the handle open a little bit better for an even stronger fit or leave it in the kind of removable fashion. If you want a better ax, keeping everything under $200, I'd say go with a, uh, a less expensive Mora for the main knife and then you can spend a little more on your, on your ax. Some of the CRKT stuff's really good. Some of the Condor stuff is really good in that price range too. As for the saw, I'm all about silky saws. I love them. And what I would go with is actually different from what you might, or what I re might recommend for a typical like home user or general camp user. Uh, I'm a big fan of the silky big boy with the slightly curved blade because it's, it seems to be more efficient to me when you're going through a round log, the curve helps kind of bite in. But for a bushcraft purpose, I would go something with go with something with a straighter blade like this one right here. Uh, this is the Super Excel 21. It's got a seven and a half inch straight blade made in Japan and then in typical Japanese style, this is a saw that works on the pull cut only. But the reason I would go with the straight edge here is there's a little bit more precision than the curved blade. If you're needing to make a notch for some kind of project that's gonna fit together more precisely, you've got a better option here. But unlike the Gomboy series that has a straight handle, which is very popular, the Super Excel has the slightly curved handle. So you kind of get the best of both worlds there. Hold it in, such, in certain ways and you kind of mimic the curved action of the curved blades of the other ones, but you can still get the nice straight precision as well. These things cut like a dream, they're locking. You got two positions on this one as well if you're cutting something close to the ground. Really, really nice. And these are $48 right now. Leaving us some dollars left for the strop, check out the JRE Industries field strop. Here it is all bundled up, it's 12 bucks. Elastic shock cord at the end, and it's even preloaded with green abrasive compound. We can also, uh, we also have them preloaded in black compound if you want something a little more aggressive. Really compact, but a ton of real estate there for all kinds of things, not just your knives, but your axes and hatchets and that sort of thing will work really well. You can use it slack, or if you have a flat surface laying around like a picnic table or something, work really well there also. Really, really cool unit right here. Very easy to take with you. I think that's a great combo, and I, I actually don't have the final total here uh, in front of me, at least based on our current prices, but it is less than $200. Thomas, can we do like a equation or a Math. total here? Math in the upper left-hand corner, right? Right hand for you, stage left, right? That's how stage directions work. That's how stages work. If you are willing to spend more on just the knife, if your, your $200 budget is just for the knife, Joker is still a good option. I mean, they really do feel far more expensive. Uh, but there's some other stuff you can look at, like the LT Wright stuff, this Holy Bushman. This one's actually like 208, but we've got a few versions under the $200 mark. Uh, a lot of the GNS models and the Bushcrafters are available. Uh, for less than 200 bucks. Fantastic knife. Lifetime warranty, made by hand, just perfect ergonomics. Excellent. I, I can never say enough good things about the LT Wright stuff. There's a nice Tops knife here, uh, 168 for that Brocamo that we uh, looked at. Castrum's also another kind of underappreciated and hidden gem. This number 10 right here is about 145 bucks. It's got a really comfortable handle here, linen micarta on this one, but there's a few different versions of it out there. Super comfortable, four inch blade, 14C28N, Sandvik steel here again, just superb. And one of the features that many bushcraft knives will have that the Joker has, but not maybe quite as well as most, or many Moras, most LT rights and this Castrum right here, the ability to strike a fire steel with the spine, just kind of a, frequent bushcraft mentioned task. These castrums are fantastic. The sheaves as well. I mean, look how good that is. These are made, I believe in Finland, right? No, Sweden, derp. 
It says so right on the, the brand right there. Really, really cool knives. You know what threw me off? Usually I think of Lapland as being more of a finished thing, but that's not actually correct, is it? Check out some of those options for a, uh, an even more premium bushcraft knife experience. Good stuff. All right, next question comes from Cab. Uh, is D2 okay for bushcraft? I know it can be rather chippy. Would a scr Scandi grind help with the chippiness? Uh, well, actually, as we mentioned earlier, a Scandi grind can actually be less durable than a, a thicker edge profile. D2 can work. You do see it in uh, some situations such as this real steel bushcraft right here, about an $80 knife. It does have a D2 blade. It's eh, about an eighth of an inch thick, not super thick. It can certainly work, but for me, I tend to like something a little bit thicker. D2 works great at edge retention. It's got, uh, when you go down to the carbide structure, really big, hard carbides, which work great at holding an edge, but it does create places for fractures to start forming actually, and can be a little more chippy. Yes, it works. Something like the uh, 14C28N, I'd be a, a bigger fan of personally. Now we come to the lightning round for today. Jackboy20 says, I've recently started getting into bushcraft and like the look of the Condor Bush Lore, which is this knife right here. While shopping around, I found that Condor sell blade blanks of this knife at a much cheaper price. It's about half, this is like 62, 63, the blank, blanks are about 30 bucks. Um, what's the difference? Is it just scales and sheath or the blade steel itself different? Can I buy a blade blank, wrap the tang in paracord and essentially have the same knife? Yes, well, the blade itself between the blank version and the handled version are the same. Uh, as you can see here, they're finished a little bit differently. You've got a bead blast on the uh, handled version and more of a uh, satin finish on the non-handled version, although I've seen that kind of change over the years. It's not always consistent. You're getting a 100% Rockwell hardened, Rockwell hardened, 100% hardened knife blade right here. It's perfectly functional as a knife blade but you don't get a handle and you don't get a sheath. That's the difference. So if you were to buy this, you'd have to find some kind of carry system and you probably aren't gonna wanna bushcraft with just a skeletonized knife like this. Not skeletonized, but you know what I mean. A paracord wrap could help, sure. You still gotta come up with a sheath system. The standard bush lure at about 62, 63 bucks is not terribly inexpensive, or not terribly expensive to start with. I recommend going with that. However, if you are interested in making your own set of handles for a blank like the Bush Lore. Stay tuned in a couple of weeks. We're working on a, a how-to video there, which should be pretty cool. All right, now Herbie Husker says, Hi DCA, can you compare Bowler N695 to Sandvik 14C28N? Uh, if everything else is equal, which steel would you choose for an outdoor camping bushcraft fixed blade? Uh, well, here is the Joker Bushcrafter. It is N695, which is more or less similar or the same to something like 440C, which may hold an edge longer than something like 14C28N. However, personally, I've found kind of like that on paper suggestion. I'm not always sure it holds up. I've been able to get some really, really long lasting edges out of 14C28N and similar stuff like AEBL. But when it comes down to these two steels, the main difference, the edge retentions shouldn't be dramatically different, but the main difference, toughness. And you're gonna have more of it with the Sandvik. So I would prefer that personally, but still, again, both are gonna work pretty well. And now we come to our final question of the day, which is, of course, our most serious question of the day, which comes from Killane McCallan. Serious question, which, which knife represents you the most? Not your favorite, but which represents your personality, character, demeanor, etc. Well, for me, it's got to be a Nesmuk. It's got a lot of belly. There you go. I'm not going to argue. Yeah. Like this table today, we've got a lot of jokers in our, uh, our audience there. That's all we've got for today, however. Thanks for your questions. Let me know what you thought. If you have any different uh, suggestions or answers, drop them down below. And if you have any questions, for a chance at getting featured in a future episode, just drop them in the comments. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives right here, you can check out the links in our description and those will take you to knifecenter.com. And don't forget about our Knife Rewards program so that when you're buying one of these knives today, you'll at least get to earn some free money to spend on a future one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. It's Thomas behind the camera and we're signing off.
See you next time.